this has no structure. And how is this gonna last two more hours and 40 minutes? <laughs> Took her out of an abusive home only to bring her into another abusive home. Like, dude, you, you're not saving her. That is how you find someone that's like vulnerable. This was filed in 2023, like just last year. This is weird, huh? It's very weird to read. We're getting derailed. Let's go, 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 go. Tonight, we're gonna be catching up with Onision. <laughs> Not literally, okay? I hope nobody thinks that. I, I was thinking, I was like, wonder if people are gonna come in here thinking I'm like gonna do a stream with him. That'd be nuts, huh? That would be quite a random turn of events. I recently went to his channel and saw that he had like this documentary on himself. And I, I can't lie, I got to like 20 minutes and I was like, this is insane. I gotta, I gotta, I can't watch this alone. This, this is nuts. This has been up for um, three months. No, more than three months, October 2nd. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's got 52,000 views. So there's a chance some of you may have seen it. Okay, this is the beginning of this video. Get ready. I had little to no contact with Greg. Buddy, the problem is, is that when I was on the phone with my Aunt Kelly and my mom, you threatened to kill yourself in the background, so that's two witnesses. It's... It... You know what? No, you're gonna listen to me. Here she is again, slandering Oni Sion, fabricating claims against the man she herself admitted she never even spoke to, and of course, wishes death upon this total stranger. Did he attempt to have a, a physical or sexual relationship with you during this time? No, we never... We never did anything. They're asking if you and Kai and Greg ever. Okay, okay. I, I told you it would require a lot of pausing, right? I, I don't know what you guys are feeling or thinking right now, but yeah, we're 35 seconds in, and this is the flow of the video. So. Ever had a relationship previous to being 18? <laughs> you have to be more specific than that. Like sexual never... relationship. No. Yeah, no. It's not, no, I didn't mean like I was thinking about it or whatever. It's literally just, yeah, we did not. I didn't, because. Sarah states nothing happened prior to her being an adult. Okay, also, by the way, um, you guys can't really see because I got it cropped, or it's also kind of. Here, let me try to move it a little bit. Let me uncrop it. But basically, at the top here, those little letters at the top, it. I'll just read them for you. It says, for legal reasons, consider everything in this video is from a perspective and or is alleged. Use the facts slash evidence and think for yourself. What? From a perspective, a perspective. Who's, pers who's perspective? Your perspective, obviously Onision's perspective. Like, what? this is a weird sentence. This destroys her entire narrative about Onision, but the internet has selective memory. What he, what he okay, so... If we're connecting the dots, this is the second time that there's like an AI voice that's, I guess, speaking for Onision. Because once again, remember, Onision wants you to know that this is just a perspective. Maybe not his. <laughs> it's a perspective. So he's not going to use his actual voice. And, and and let's go back to the first time. She herself admitted she is again slandering Onision, fabricating claims against the man she herself admitted she never even spoke to. And of course... What like what? what this is this is the beginning of the video like what 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 is this this is a documentary what the hell this destroys her entire narrative about Oni's okay they the also the the really jumbled up part no everything about this is jumbled up because if we go to the beginning right it starts out with Regina oh no yeah it starts with Regina goes to Shiloh goes back to Regina goes to Sarah and then goes to Shiloh, like, dude, what? what? What, you call this a documentary? How are, we, how are people supposed to keep up? What, what, I mean, what is this? I mean, I, I'm assuming he wants everybody to pause every five seconds. Okay, I guess, you're welcome. But we're a minute in, and this is gonna go for two hours, guys. A lot of people are saying that I used to be happy, go lucky, and cheerful before Greg, that I was different back then. Here's the truth. The first message I sent to Greg was because the man I was with at the time was verbally abusive and I wanted to know what I should do. So I messaged Greg. When Greg and I started dating, it was just after I ended my four year relationship with my ex. I was okay before my ex. I loved myself and I was happy with how I looked and how I acted. But ever since that relationship, I have been scared. Right. So basically she had like a bad relationship before Onision and then she was very happy with Onision and then obviously that went sour. 
et cetera, et cetera. Okay. But I'm not sure of the timeline here. So I don't really understand how this is supposed to help the viewer because 2011, like, is this after the breakup or because I guess he's trying to present the case that like Shiloh lied about him or something. I don't know. Has selective memory. What he said in the video originally was encouraging as to why I should not kill myself, which I was heavily considering it. Shiloh calling Sarah, Billy, and the others publicly attacking Oni Siong. Liars. Regina also admits she has a drug problem. Saying she was certain she'd never get to be with them because of how clear it was made she had no chance. F well, why is he switching to AI voices, you know? Like, what is this? For the five millionth time, Sarah confirms nothing happened to her as a minor and that she was not groomed. It could not be more painful. Wait, also, we just went from Regina to Sarah again. Okay. Um... Fully clear. Ironically, they posted the flight times of Sarah returning. They clearly state that this is when they're saying this heinous event occurred. So this is from like Sarah's lawsuit, I guess. Over the next few years, Sarah visited several times on or about the following dates. One day after. They really state that this is when they're saying this heinous event occurred. One day after her visit. But then they're establishing that she came back three more times, the very last time, to exclusively be with me. As you can see here, she is bragging about that time where she was exclusively with me. So if she was supposedly horribly violated on this date, why in a million years would you ever return to the house where this horrible incident you claim occurred three times? And on the third time, you're openly bragging about sleeping with someone else's husband. Billy supports a statement that Shiloh and Regina are disgusting. This document was posted to public drama sites. A lot of people question whether or not it was legitimate. However, it's difficult to understand why anyone would make this if it was not real. I tells me, oh. <laughs> okay, that was funny. I remember, okay guys, they also had made one. Um, I, I think, th didn't they make one? I forgot. I actually legit uh, legitimately forgot if they had made one about me and i was like i for sure never got this doesn't even look real like but he's like why would they make this if it's not real it's like uh what like hold on first of all if we look at it tax 2.9 subtotal twenty thousand. i mean does she get paid 20k that would be crazy that, i mean if she got paid 20k but i never knew about any call in emily if she got paid 20k that's a lot of money i'm jealous jesus but I like how he says a lot of people are saying this. Okay, good one. Difficult to understand why anyone would make this if it was not real. I tells me, oh, I'm dating a girl named Billy. Named Billy. And I was like, oh, I thought we were dating. And it kind of just ended at that point, and I started just really thinking from there. It cannot be stressed enough. Wait, what was that? Hold on. That point, and I started. So, so they're calling her a random person online that you never met. Really? The chatterbait model who framed Kai Onisen. Okay, so, um, all right. Development, I guess. Thinking I... from there. It cannot be stressed enough that even after Sarah turned 18, she was still rejected. This is the nuclear truth bomb. So many people tried to hide from you. I did struggle with addiction previously. There was no intimate sexual contact between you and Kai or you and Greg? No, they never, they never tried to like kiss me or anything before I was 18. They haven't done anything to me. I'm going to destroy you. Sarah states on the police report what she stated on the streams. Nothing happened to her as a minor, meaning only Sion was around the minor for many months and did nothing wrong. This establishes he's not a predator whatsoever. Additionally, she states that even after she became an adult, Nothing happened, meaning there was no grooming. Like especially, especially Kai, but I, I still, I still love them, even Greg and Sarah talking about how guilty she felt around the time she apologized for raping Oni Sion after he cut ties with her. I want to tell myself that when you're 17 and you get kicked out of your house and you're standing in the middle of the road on your phone, crying, not knowing where you're going to go next. Kai is not going to care. They weren't like actually foster parents. What's me. happening? I'm so lost. I feel bad. Now I'm like, what, 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 what am I stringing you guys along with? And I feel like if I speed it up, we're going to miss a lot. So let's, I guess we just sit through and suffer a little bit longer. Anything like that. How close are you and Sarah now? Sarah's my friend? best friend. She is your best friend. Yes. Sarah's not your friend, bro. Sarah's actual friend lane. 
Once again, so, <laughs> so it's it's so I, I can't tell what even. How, does he want to be taken seriously? Because first of all, he said, "Sir's not your friend, bro." He didn't even put a comma before "bro." Sarah claims to be the one grooming. They have zero evidence of anything illegal going on because nothing illegal has gone on. This is harmful to your, my, and Greg's reputation. It's a hundred percent slander. That's a pretty strong and bold statement that nothing has ever happened to Sarah that was illegal. More proof that Sarah swore on her grandma's life that she was not groomed. Look at me. We broke up. Look at me. We I don't up. give a shit. Because it's the same. She actually literally sent me the post, emailed it to me. She's like, "Look what I did. Look at that. I did this thing. We take me back." You know, I like, I, I don't know, like, this is so, like, all over the place, right? Like, so scattered. And it is unfortunate that, like, a lot of these, these uh, Onision victim girls, like, did kind of set themselves up to some degree. Like, right? Like, Shiloh literally emailed Onision an I'm sorry post. I mean, a lot of this is, like, circumstantial, like, abusive relationship. Kind of, like, want to get back with them because, you know, it, it can be it can be pointed to that. But, like, I this has no structure. And how is this going to last two more hours and 40 minutes? <laughs> I don't actually know if we're going to do more parts, guys. This better be get better. What, what is happening? Back now, make another mistake. Shiloh writes Onision months after he stopped talking to her and still hasn't talked to her to this day. Shiloh admits she is proud of Onision. Here they're saying that she signed the NDA under duress. As you saw from the videos before, she was not under duress, considering she set her own terms for signing the NDA. She even said 10 days before being supposedly blindsided by this NDA that she specifically wanted me me to sign one because I have a fat mouth. So she's demanding that I sign an NDA here. And then Sarah's admitting that there's no evidence of me being anything like that. So unfortunately for Sarah and unfortunately for us, Sarah is actually one of the greatest witnesses to contradict Sarah. In fact, he made fun of her, but draws the obvious conclusion. He was again bullying her because she was being a weirdo, sticking her butt up in the air while laying on a beanbag chair. The fact that Sarah manipulated that into something perverted is why she got kicked out. Billy defended only Onision and his spouse saying they were not grooming anyone. She said, so "Dude, it's like it's like Onision almost like builds a case where I could almost elaborate on something. Then he distracts me with like what this like Meg Griffin like in the." Served as yet another witness to there being nothing wrong. At the time, it seemed to me as giving reasons why it would. <laughs> Who is Onision? A celebrity? This seems like creepy found footage movie. I know for real. Exactly. It really does, huh? This is so random. Like he was on acid for real. And and, and guys. Uh, there's two other ones. There's two other ones that are over an hour. I wonder if they're better. I don't know. Okay, we should speed this up. I'll He's skip through it a little bit. stupid to kill myself. And so th that was helpful to you. The physical encounters directly contradicted one another in conjunction with how much them on against Onision and makes it incredibly clear she is a legitimately insane person. Onision viewers determined what content Onision content would be made. Yet when people turned on him, they all blamed him, despite the fact he repeatedly stated you had to be an adult to post images for rating videos. And you had... You had so here he's addressing the whole 18 plus stuff, right? Now, the issue, Onision, is the fact that like, even if you had these rules um, and you had countless mods enforce your rules, then why did you still go ahead and like, you know, rate the people that were not 18 plus? Had to only submit content that was appropriate for YouTube. This once again debunks Onisi on predator roamers, but few care because the moment you support Onisi on hateful that, ignorant Hitler? psychopaths attack you. You people fucking framed an innocent man. You knew what you were. <laughs> what the AI? The AI is mad at us. It's like you people fucking framed an innocent. For doing. You knew what your end game was. How dare you? Shame on you. I, I have nothing else to... Here Shiloh explains why she cheated on Oni Siong and got pregnant with another man's baby. Basically, she just blames her mental insanity on whoever is convenient at the time. Your career's been unfinished. Trust me, I'm capable of it. Now I actually want to destroy you because you destroyed me. You're done, and then you'll be left with nothing. This is Regina the exact same year defending Oni Siong's spouse and Sarah. Hilarious how Regina supported something she later said was predatory. Everything in this video is from a perspective. Thank you for your and or alleged. No need see on first defended himself with Did it just start or something? Did, did the video just start? By the way, once again, this whole message is exactly what it says at the very top. Small text. 
When Onision first defended himself with facts and evidence, Sarah and Regina, instead of countering his points and proving their false claims about him, they resorted to threatening legal action. People who are honest prove they are honest with evidence. Instead, they ran to a pro bono lawyer who is actively trying to essentially steal money from Google via lies and fraud. The following video isn't about Onision defending himself as much as it is Regina and Sarah literally proving themselves with their own words in prior videos that they are frauds and liars. Discovery Plus took a known lying prostitute, a known CP distributing fraud, and a self-admitted rapist criminal, and gave them a TV show designed to destroy Onision's life. They are just as guilty. Okay, so, whoa. It, it, okay, so it does seem like the first eight minutes or so that we just sat through might have been like a teaser type of intro, which, what? Maybe that's why it was confusing. Like, who? this guy's so out of touch. Usually, like, attention grabbers are supposed to be like 30 seconds, a minute at most. But that was, what? Also, he's calling Regina a prostitute, which, woofling knowingly, as far as I know, Regina wasn't doing chatterbait back in, when this happened. So, I mean, I don't know. This, I don't know if, if Discovery Plus willfully and knowingly did that, but I don't even know what that has to do with anything either. Guilty of fraud as the four horsemen of the Onisi on Apocalypse, Sarah, Regina, Shiloh, and Chris Hansen. When this <laughs> the four horsemen of the Apocalypse video was put together, Chris Hansen Associates, Sarah and Regina have conspired to use false information to defraud Google, YouTube, Oni Sion, and his spouse with the hopes of essentially stealing hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's disgusting and horrible they would frame YouTube, Google, Oni Sion, and his spouse like this. But money is the root of all evil. The following extremely long video was put together to prove with concrete evidence that Oni Sion has always been the following. 1. Against grooming and groomers. 2. Against rape and rapists. 3. Against liars and lying. 4. Against pedophilia and pedophiles. 5. Against fraud and frauds. Onision is a former cop and has always Onision. taken a stance against crime, especially confirmed criminals like former cop and is always... He's a former cop? What? I thought he was just in the military and like, uh, got dishon dishonorary discharged. Taking a stance... Also, I feel like these AI voices, this one specifically is like, like... Not yelling at me, but aggress being quite aggressive. Against crime, especially confirmed criminals like... Is he saying he's suing Discovery? No, he, he's not. He's not suing Discovery. No, he, he ain't got that kind of money. He's, he's being sued by... Um, I, don't, I don't know what the status is. Does anybody genuinely follow this saga? Because um, he does get into developments that I, I wasn't aware of before. But um, because... There's been a lawsuit between Onision and I don't know if it's joint with Sarah and Kai. I mean, Sarah and Regina, but I know that they are both suing him or I don't know if that's over or what. He's suing others like Onision. The thing that confused me about that is that I think he filed. I thought he filed for bankruptcy, but like does I don't even understand why he listed Repsion. That's that also confused me. They're all separate. OK, so there's there's two separate lawsuits then against them, I believe. Like Chris Hansen, criminals like Sarah, and criminals like Regina. Onision opposes them all. This video covers how 1. Onision was repeatedly slandered beyond any doubt. 2. Onision was victimized and abused both physically and emotionally. 3. Onision was framed for things he didn't do. 4. Onision's career was destroyed without any justification. And much more. Let's start out with the fact that Onision's rating videos were actually the opposite of what horrible people said they were. Onision regularly demanded only adults participate and that all content be YouTube appropriate. Horrible pieces of garbage spread false rumors about Onision's forums, and they should be called out for their lies. We're using the website Onision.co, where if you're a grown-up, you can post pictures about a lot of stuff, so long as it's YouTube appropriate. First off, I want to establish that the forum specifically state 18 plus only. So if you submitted a photo and you're not 18 plus, you either weren't paying attention or you're a liar. Either way. Are there not videos where he is rating, like, teenagers, though? I feel like that's in my brain. I feel like I even did a video 
years ago about that. I'll, I'll look it up in the background. Way, shame on you. Now let's dive into the disgusting and screwed up accusations Onision has had to deal with for years. Thanks to people he removed from his life who want revenge on him for immutilizing a basic right. His right to choose whether or not he allows criminals to be around him and his family. Sarah makes it repeatedly clear that she feels she has a personality disorder, regularly using memes to describe her BPD. Sarah often attacked women in their lives, calling them psychos and implying she wished they'd find a sane woman to be with. Sarah sharing a text of her accusing what she described as a black man of taking her virginity, claiming to own EC on this sane person raped her. Sarah is a serial accuser. She accuses Billy and Ayala of serious wrongdoing, while praising Oni Sion's partners, saying all he ever did was let her be friends with them. She has since completely changed her story. Sarah going on about the alleged black man she says raped her. Oni Sion believed her at the time, felt sorry for her. Big mistake. Sarah accused her own mother of sexually inappropriate behavior. The list of people she has accused of life-ruining accusations is seemingly endless. Sarah yet again talking about another person who supposedly committed sex crimes against her. It's disturbing how many people she claims to be a Whoa, okay, okay. That is crazy, huh? <laughs> Let's see. I'm at a video here. Okay, I remember I did a video... Uh, yeah, apparently I did a video on 2019. Back when Onision got his uh -oh bro video uh, channel taken down. But that was... I think in my video, I was thinking it's because of harassment. I think he, he had said it was harassment. And it's because I was probably uh, thinking it was because he had so many Regina Cooney videos that where he was harassing her. Um, but I guess I didn't mention the whole like rating minors and stuff. So I don't know. I, I was pretty sure he did, but it's it's a big rabbit hole. I feel like 2020 over again. I know, right? This is such a this is such a flashback. And. A lot of this is so, so like, how do you expect us to just take this in? And, and what? This feels like petty. Some of this feels like petty, like, I don't know if we need to know all this. Like, what? Like, suddenly, ah. Uh. Be a victim. But it gets crazier, guys. Once again, Sarah jokes about having BPD, a serious personality disorder. I, I discussed it in a 12-hour stream. Oh, boy, I'm not going to find that. That can sometimes result is malice slash slander toward those who reject you. Sarah bragging about Onisi on being terrified of her, just as he claimed he was, and saying LOL be mad to publicly mock him, just as Billy, the woman Sarah claims tried to starve Sarah, did to Onisi on prior, both taking full advantage of the fact that if they put Onisi on tried to starve... Or, or 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 Billy try to start Onision. How I have this on normal speed. I feel like I have it faster suddenly. It's what's he saying? Do, I feel like we just have to like sit here. Publicly attacked Oni Sion, they would be rewarded after Sarah proceeded to destroy Oni Sion's life just like she said she could prior to extorting him. She tried to form an alliance with an ex-girlfriend of Oni Sion's considering Sarah had been talking trash about Shiloh in private for years. It's no... Okay, what I can't... What honestly, like I can't stand is like this weird like soft music and all this bullshit when like he was actively... Like, you know, the 12-hour stream that Vid's like... uh referencing in the chat i would i did like a 12 hour stream because he did like i don't know it was like a week of of long ass videos about like everything in his drama and he was so like he was so attacking he was attacking everybody so it's not like he was like sitting there helpless acting like his life was ruined at any point you know that would be a different story maybe you could you could maybe you could you could be victim here if you actually at least played victim back then but you didn't seem phased at all you seem he was like very aggressive so it's like you're not really, you know, oh, so, like prize their alliance didn't last. Former co-host of Chris Hansen revealing that the monetized live streams were controlled by the false accusers. If anyone with or without evidence. Oh, that's true. Regina was a moderator for Chris Hansen, which, you know, in hindsight is a little like, but everything that Chris Hansen did was a little like tried to defend Oni Sion, they would be immediately silenced so the truth about his innocence couldn't be spread. Sarah claims she never wanted to file a lawsuit against Oni Sion. She claims she doesn't have animosity toward Oni Wait, okay, okay, this is, okay, so this is what was crazy to me and why I'm curious if people know stuff because look at this. Talked with S, I'm assuming Sarah, 7, 7.49 p.m. to 10.28 p.m., March 12th, 2023. Like, this is new. Okay, sorry it took so long to get to the new part, guys. Um, like I said, I watched 20 minutes of this, and I remember this was like, what? And, but like, what? 
Did anybody know that Sarah? Well, and I'm actually, I'm not even sure what's going on. I, I'm assuming that this is um, Kai and not Onision talking to Sarah. But is this like wild or what? Let's see. So I, I think like Kai was taking notes on her conversation with with Sarah and it says, let her know what Blank said regarding options she could have if she did not want to file the lawsuit. She said she was still thinking about it and needed time to sit with it. She told me that she never really wanted to file in the first place, but really only did because James wouldn't stop talking about her. Right. So, yeah, James Onision also said she does not want to testify. She said the lawyers told her there was money in it from YouTube and that they might settle. She says it has been going on so long and she's really tired and doesn't want to do this anymore or hold the animosity towards each other anymore. After that, the conversation got lighter and we talked mostly about random things in our lives. She talked about that she was glad um, she was no longer around a group of bad friends who were getting her into trouble as such as drunk driving or driving drunk and getting into an accident where she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. We decided to go to bed, but briefly talked more about the fact that she did not want to do this lawsuit and wants to be able to move on with her life and have privacy. She said she wants to talk to a family friend lawyer and that she will keep me in the loop. Unless this is not Kai, because obviously it's not Onision because there's James in there. But like, huh? What, what is this? And I'm reading it out loud because Onisian doesn't read it and he doesn't even explain the context. So it's like, what is this? Never wanted to file a lawsuit against Onision. She claims she doesn't have animosity toward Onision's partner. Debunking their trauma claim, Sarah confesses she has had multiple incidents of driving while intoxicated, which is a crime that could end human lives. She talks about trying to get out of the lawsuit by talking to a family friend who is a lawyer. Unfortunately for her, she signed a contract and is stuck in the slanderous lawsuit she started. Sarah once again proved why Onision was afraid of her and locked himself in a room when he refused to be with her, just like he said he did. She publicly states she wants to physically assault him, which our society only deemed acceptable because of her gender. Fuck I yeah. I challenge Onision to a boxing match. Oh my god, dude. Sarah publicly slandering Onision and his partner. She states they slept with her right after she turned 18. Lying, stone cold. There is a text of her ranting about how even after she was 18, they still refused to be with her. She would not have gotten away with this obvious lie and adjust intelligent and honest society Sarah bragging about being an illegal drug dealer about sleeping with her okay, best friends okay. like there's so many reaches you know like if if I was to be like if I was to not know what I know about Onision and to actually be compelled to to hear him out and stuff like I feel like there's some things he says that I, I could be like okay but like then he goes to this like here she is bragging about being a drug dealer. It's like, oh my God, dog. It's like, no, like there's this context be behind this that you're obviously like ex ex exerting or, or excluding rather, sorry. But um, yeah. Husband behind his back and about doing highly illegal drugs. How anyone supported a self-proclaimed illegal drug dealing, failed home wrecking drug abuser is beyond me. Sarah once claimed she was a second mom to Onision's kids. Here she is publicly calling Onision pathetic when he pointed out how much damage she had done to him and his family. Sarah trolled, laughed, and taunted Onision on social media weeks after he refused to sleep with her. Many months later, still having not seen him after he refused to sleep with her at where's the connection there's no connection <laughs> like that whole thing happened in like february of that year and then like in september you're acting like because you rejected her she's saying eat my ass so i, I guess i guess onision's like, like uh, angle here is that because he rejected sarah that's why she went on this crazy ex-girlfriend rampage it's a tough sell it's a tough sell um yeah, I mean, like, you know, if we want to be really charitable to Onision, we could we could see that there is some instability here with, with Sarah. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't even know. Look, I'm, I'm just very confused at, at, uh, at this whole like who she communicated with or why he's got notes on that. So if anybody knows in the chat, tag me so I can make sure I don't miss it. <laughs>
And since he rejected her, she would cry on national television about what a victim she believed herself to be. This completely contradictory and creepy behavior is likely disturbing to real victims of real crimes everywhere. Much of this evidence was captured multiple times using multiple methods ensuring Sarah's disgusting lies. I like how he's like using proof, like he's like screen recording a Google Doc. And the Google Doc is a video that he uploaded. <laughs> would not stand the test of time. In early 2023, Sarah admitted to Oni Sion's partner she was accused by a person she slept with of giving them a sexually transmitted disease. Okay, so again, this is this is also interesting but odd. Like conversation with with Sarah from 10, 10 5 p.m. to 12 10 p.m. Doesn't say the date, but um, it says she's anxious to talk to me because she doesn't want James to think that means that they have an open communication now and that she doesn't want him to use us talking as a means to say they, that everything is fine. She told me that she frequently smokes a joint while driving. She was talking about a guy telling everyone she gave him chlamydia. And I said that I don't get why people air out their laundry on social media and told a story my sister told me about a guy we went to high school with admitting that he talked to underage girls. She went silent and then said that she had zoned out. I have the screenshots of what my sister sent me of that Facebook post to prove that I was not talking about us. She also said that she could see herself becoming a serial killer for men who are bad and if people start getting killed in Michigan that it's probably her. She also said that she has done LSD twice and that when she was a waitress, she would do coke before waiting tables. She reminded me how she would go shot for shot with tequila at the parties her mom threw with college guys when she was a teenager. I told her that we didn't have to talk if she was uncomfortable and we agreed to revisit this sometime this weekend. Wow, what a loaded note there, huh? She admitted she wishes she could be a serial killer of men, as that is her dream job. She's I gotta say, that is a good movie, though. Have you guys seen that movie where uh, the woman, like, kills guys that are are pervy or look like they're gonna take advantage of a woman? <laughs> I forgot what it's called. It's a pretty good one. But, you know, murder's bad. But the movie, in, in a movie, it, it's... States she did cocaine at work, that she did LSD and accused her mom of providing her alcohol no, when not, she was a not Jennifer's body. See, now I'm going to have to Google it. A teenager again, indicating she is a completely out of control criminal while serial accusing others of wrongdoing. During all these conversations Sarah had with Oni Sion and his partner in early 2020. OK, so during all these conversations, seriously, it was so effed up, like even if it was true, it would be effed up to do that. Someone it literally was a load of BS about to go to my medical records and beat him with it. I was going psychotic. Okay. Notice in one section of the Snapchats, Sarah talks about being accused of giving someone an STD and as a result of showing up to their, and as a result showing up to their house and physically threatening them. Psycho. Sarah had with Oni Sion and his partner in early 2023. She knew they could not legally record her voice due to state laws. Right, okay, so I'm pretty sure we're getting the confirmation that these are Kai's hands and Onision is the one recording the conversation. Like, why is Sarah in touch with Onision? Well, not, not Onision, I guess, uh, Kai. Like, I, why isn't Onision filling us in on this? Because this is nuts. Right? However, they were allowed to write down notes. Not legally record her voice due to state laws. However, they were allowed to write down notes. Oh, okay. So, so basically, because of the, because Nunesian is so respectful of the law, he didn't record the call, but he wrote down notes, and that's what happened. Green capture their snap. Chats, which they did for the sake of holding the criminal accountable while remaining law abiding themselves. Sarah. It's so funny. It's like me and my partner, Kai, we, we, we remained a law abiding, unlike the criminals. Oh my God. Sarah talked trash about Shiloh and Regina in private before Oni Sion rejected Sarah. She then resorted to public. Okay, let's see. So Sarah did her justice by telling, uh, by telling it herself. 
Okay, so this is back when um, the Onision 4 or, or episode 4 of the Onision documentary came out, um, which was actually extremely unexpected because if we're talking about throwbacks here, if you guys remember, this is one of my uh, many cancellations, right? I was canceled for participating in this documentary because the reason why I was canceled is because the 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 victims of Onision didn't want anything to do with it. Well, what a turn of events. The victim of Onision ended up becoming the finale. So talk about a crazy cancellation roller coaster there, huh? I got fucking flagellated and Sarah ended up being a part of it anyway. <laughs> Um, so yeah, there you can see, well, it's actually kind of small, but basically Repsion says, I guess we're getting episode four now on the Onisian documentary. What an unexpected change. Hope this turns out better than the last three. Um, and then Sarah said, or Lane, Sarah's friend says, Sarah did her justice by telling it herself instead of letting Shailo tell it for her. She did not want to participate and never had any intention to until she saw how poorly Shailo and Regina represented her in, in episode two. Yeah, to be fair, episode one, okay, was not not bad all right in fact i endorsed it because it's it stayed faithful to what i was told that they weren't gonna you know use any other victims i was like oh great and then i got humiliated because episode two and three complete went against what they told me so i got owned <laughs> and let's see it says their entire dis interaction with sarah after episode two to discuss her involvement took place over less than two weeks F anyone trying to bring Sarah down for this because none of you know how difficult this has been. Sarah hates Shiloh and Regina. All of us do. Moi. Damn. Trashing Oni Sion and self. Take a shot every time Edwin's been canceled. Fuck. That'll get you a good buzz for sure. Only publicly supported Regina and Shiloh simultaneously. That fragile group of frauds didn't last. According to Lane, Sarah's friend, she was right back to hating Shiloh and Regina when Oni Sion's life had successfully been destroyed. In many legal cases, part of establishing that someone is slandering you is to establish malice. Here it becomes very clear Sarah wishes death on Oni Sion, or in other words, for the kids she claimed she was a second mom to, to lose their father forever. A Effectively destroying their family. Like, I just, I wish that he did not exist. Earlier in this video, you saw Sarah publicly bragging about sleeping with. What do you guys think about that? Is saying someone wished it didn't exist, is that wishing death? I don't think so. See, because then I, I'm like inclined to think of the people I wish didn't exist, but that doesn't mean I want them dead. Maybe that just means that you don't, you wish they didn't exist in my life, right? with her best friend's husband behind her friend's back. Here she is saying people who are homewreckers are insane, only to become a person who failed at attempting to steal someone's husband herself. For anyone who questions the legitimacy of the notes from the early 2023 conversations, specifically that she claimed that her dream job would be to be a serial killer of men, here she is again, proclaiming that she hates all men. She is a deeply disturbing and violently sexist human being. It I literally had those images in my head all day. And when I, I'm finally relaxing, he texts me for the first time in two weeks. I wanted to feel better. If what? you are a man watching this, know that Sarah hates you for literally oh, no good reason. Sarah hates me. Reason. You remember Shiloh, the woman Sarah hated privately, supported publicly, then hated publicly. Sarah was pressured by the deeply disturbed Shiloh to destroy Onision's life even more so than Sarah had accomplished on her own. As destroying Onision had been a primary goal of Shiloh's since he dumped her for a final time after he found out she had been cheating on him and was pregnant with the baby of another man, again, while he was dating her. Proof that Shiloh had a specific and malicious intent to destroy Onision's life after he rejected her slash broke up with her for being psychotic toward him. Okay, that was a mouthful. And honestly, I feel I feel sorry. Like, even though this is still extremely hard to follow, I do feel bad. I feel like I should have skipped through the first seven minutes because that was a that was a mess. But what what is this, dude? I'm finished. Trust me, I'm capable of it. Now I actually want to destroy you because you've destroyed me. You're done. And then you'll be left with nothing. Basically, the NDA or whatever, like, he brought it up and I was like, I don't really want to do it. And I was like, oh, yeah, we're, we're just having everybody sign on. Like, the issue, though, is like, dude, this could be pretty good evidence, but what is it evidence for? It's just her threatening him. But like, where's the context? You know, like Onision doesn't know how to do it, whatever he's doing. And, oh, my God. And this this was always so cringe, too. I remember I made a video about this whole 
how the sexual extortion point. When I do it, it's like, oh yeah, we're we're just having everybody sign on. Like, okay, well, haha. Uh, well, I want a clause in there that says, like, if I, like, sign, I want something I'm actually signing for, like, you know, I basically was like, oh, you know, only if we do stuff will I sign the papers. <laughs> it was a fucking joke! <laughs> he makes the music more intense. This is literally, the way he also uses, like, a, a, a Google definition, too, is literally Mama Max. I'm, I'm glad we can find some mirroring examples though, because when when I, I when I when I spoke to Max like and on in the call like two years ago, I was like, "Do you really think Olivia's trying to extort you?" And he's like, "Well, it doesn't matter if I felt threatened or not. Like the the definition, if you look up the definition on Google, like legally wise, I'm like, oh my god, bro, stop, dude, you guys are so cringe. Stop, stop relying on like Google to fight your battles." <laughs> I basically was like, oh, you know, only if we do stuff will I sign the papers. Yeah, basically he was like, yeah, you didn't sign. I guess, I guess technically maybe, maybe Mama Max is mad because Olivia continued to talk about him even after he paid for her dog's medical vet treatment I, I made jokes about not signing it unless i brought something on that got what i wanted like yeah and uh, here's another parallel okay these two dudes are making people sign ndas and, and like imagine being in a relationship or even just a friendship and you make people sign a contract i i i can't imagine that like and even so, if I was being serious, like, with it. Okay. You wouldn't, you didn't force yourself on that. You, I don't think you could. <laughs> like, let's be realistic here. You just witnessed a woman confessing to taking two very scared people in the middle of hashtag me too culture. Admit to telling them that she would only sign an agreement to not destroy their lives. If they were to quote, do stuff with her. And if she got what she wanted. The uh, that's a distortion. I don't think... Wait, was was the NDA? Wait, damage the prop. Okay, no, no. The, the, whatever he wanted her to sign, did that say "Don't destroy my life"? And then we can have sex, or, or what? He's twisting everything. This is hard. The reality of what Sarah did to Oni Sion and his partner is horrifying. When Oni Sion broke up with Shiloh, a full-grown adult with a supportive family back in Canada, Shiloh threatened to kill herself and make it look like Oni Sion did it. In response, Oni Sion called the cops on Shiloh and became filming her so she could not frame him for her murder. The police had the following conversation with Oni Sion upon arrival. What would you like us to do, sir? You called. Um, I called my sister and she told me to just sleep, to just move away. I mean, this Probably is this a good is, idea. Yeah. Um, but here's the weird thing. Um, I, I can't stop paying utilities here. I can't I can't shut it off because that would be a legal eviction, according mm -hmm. to the people I talk to. Yep. So I'm thinking what I'll do is I'll just have to move to L.A. because um, I, I work. I'm going to work down there and keep paying utilities and hope my house isn't vandalized. Or do, you, are, do you rent or own? I own. Okay. But I mean, I, she, she refuses to leave, so I don't know. Well, the only way you can get her out is with an eviction or a court order. Yeah, so. so yeah, I, I, I have to work adults. every day. I work full yeah, time. Yeah, that's a day, so. Well, you got to ask, you got to get your grown. priorities and say, hey, do I want this situation to continue on or end? And then once you've made that determination, you need to take the step yeah. to move either this way or this way. And in order, in order for me to, to continue doing my job, I have to leave here because she's not leaving. Okay. So, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go to LA as soon as possible. And, and what has changed since the cops came out here last night? Um, she threatened to kill herself in between that time. Okay. And she got hysterical. And what did she say? She she said that she, she was. So she said I was on the phone with my aunt Kelly and she threatened to kill herself and I had to call the cops and she said that she was what did you say exactly? You said it you said something, you said you were gonna make it look really bad or something? Did you threaten to kill yourself, young lady? What is the relevance? You did? Oh, how come? How come? Um, that's that's not the opening of the statement. 
One of the most common false rumors about Onision revolves around debunked grooming claims. Here is a video of Onision explaining why he once kicked Sarah out for plotting a relationship in his household, and him feeling so creeped out and disgusted by Sarah that he kicked her out due to how inappropriate slash perverted she was being. So 17 hours ago, I posted about something that I found out, which was really upsetting. I stated that I talked to Sarah, and she revealed that she called someone who used to be my significant other's friend, who wound up being dumped as a friend to my significant other. Anyway, Sarah called her and messaged her. And the message Sarah sent was somewhat cryptic, which freaked us out because the message was super dramatic. It was talking about how Sarah didn't want Lane to release screenshots of some conversation they had, and it was just really awkward. So that freaked us out. I went and talked to Sarah, and Sarah admitted that she called slash messaged this ex-friend. I apologized to the ex-friend that Sarah had contacted her, and what was said made me super uncomfortable. And again, what Sarah actually said was her panicking about screenshots, which, you know, me personally, I don't panic about screenshots because if something of mine got screenshotted and it doesn't make me look good, so be it. You know, we got to own in our words. Apparently, Sarah also stated to me that she remembered saying something about her one day being in a relationship with Lainey, and that was super confusing to me as I had made it clear to the public, as you've seen in previous videos. And I also made it clear repeatedly okay. to say, oh, Regina, what the fuck, bro? What's happening? We gotta skip around now. This is getting a little too, uh, reaching that insufferable level. Like, what? what is this? There's no cohesion. There's no cohesion. We're all just, I'm just making it suffer with me now. The police, yeah, okay, this one, the police, the sheriff said that there's no proof. Okay, we know, according to, basically, you know, actually, it's kind of relevant that I happen to be reviewing this because um, I believe that we're seeing a, um, you know, th this is valid criticism to 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 give to Chris Hansen because uh, we're seeing some deja vu here with Mama Max. He's he's speed running what Chris Hansen did. You know, he, he especially with the whole peril of working with Slug, right? He's, he's ruining the case for the alleged survivors and just screwing it up we're having a hard time finding people that are actual victims. people believe that onision always refused interviews with hansen but the reality is onision challenged hansen to interviews multiple times and what did hansen do in response the journalist who is supposed to always get both sides of every story mr hansen i found this article about you and it says that you not only cheated on your wife but you also cheated on the woman you were cheating on your wife who you had two kids with anyway a charity live stream remote COVID friendly. I'm offering you a chance to clear your name. What the hell? It's so cringe, dude. Look, if they could have had a moderator, that could have been the show of the century. Chris Hansen versus Onision, but with a moderator. Because, like, Onision is so overbearing and so obnoxious. Like, you know. <laughs> right after Onision tweeted that, Chris Hansen said, Do not tell people about my past. A lot of people buried the real history behind the second smear campaign ringleader Shiloh and Onision. The final time Onision broke things off with Shiloh, he released this music video reflecting on what she put him through before he dumped her. How can anyone know who you really are? You lied about the accident in your car by suicides, the physical force. Why did I stay? I'm just another fool, of course. Yeah, in the beginning, everything. Hey, true. Why, why did you stay? You know, that, that's the whole thing. That's his whole argument throughout a lot of this, right? He keeps saying, like, if, if I was so bad, why did Shiloh come back? And why did she still want me? And why did Sarah? Also, by the way, that AI voice, this one, the other ones didn't. But this one, it kind of sounds like him. Like, did he frame the AI to sound like him? I, I feel like he probably did because he's probably like, I don't want to freaking record all this. So going to, like, make it adapt to my voice. Uh, but, like, he kept coming back to all these girls. What's up with that? Huh, right, because that, that's the whole shaming. It's like, why did you stay? Well, why did you stay? Most recently claimed to hate, posted a Tumblr right after Onision, as you okay, can right. list thing pass. How the hell is like? Rumor of husband she openly bragged about. Oh, we got a new air voice. Sleeping with behind her best friend's back. The entire grooming rumor about Onision is destroyed beyond repair in this one text. Here you see Sarah having a meltdown, because even as an adult, Onision and his partner are refusing to be with her. That's Okay, so this is Sarah texting Kai. She says, we were friends before I fell in love with you. Why the fudge would I stay friends with someone for four years to only try and date them when I never knew I had a chance with them? I have known for two years it was out of the question, not just when I was 16, 17, but even after I was 18. Greg made it painfully clear multiple times that pigs would fly before I ever could ever come close to having a chance with you even after my 18th birthday and guess what i did i stayed because you're my best friend and i love you 
Like, I don't know why you think I'm some sort of perverted liar who just used our friendship to get in your pants, but we became friends when I was 14. I didn't want anyone when I was 14, let alone my friend. I didn't start this. I was planning on keeping it a secret for the rest of our lives and allowing it and, and continuing to be your best friend because again, I have always put my love for you as my best friend above being in love with you. I regret all this. I tried so fudging hard after November to get over my feelings. I even told myself before I got up there this time that even though it would never in a million years happen if Greg suddenly became okay with it and there was a chance that I would turn it down, I, I think I think we need to just abolish this idea of like polyamory on the internet, you know? I don't know. Like he was always talking about that and he like obviously put that in people's heads. Like what what Greg would be okay, like Onision would be okay with his partner casually dating <laughs> this younger girl. <laughs> like what the fuck? Um if you didn't feel the same way the whole time, then why did Greg say you did? Oh, Greg said, okay. And then Greg said, <clears throat> excuse me, I need to butt in real quick. I see y'all India putting India. Why is he bringing India into this? <laughs> um, Lainey is poly slash bi and you were pursuing them for years. Lainey wanted to give the, Lainey, Lainey wanted to give the idea of feeling that way about you. Oh, I can't see the whole text, bruh. I'm, I'm trying to read all your evidence and you're not showing. I told you everything was based on what I observed. So the 78%. Oh, so. So he observed that Lainey may have feelings for Sarah. That wasn't actually what Lainey felt. Dude, what, 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 what? That's so weird. What a weird like, why can't they just communicate? Like, so he, he let he led Sarah on to believe that Lainey had feelings for her based on a 78% chance observation. What the frick? What I wanted most is for Lainey to be happy, which is why I N, you, and them. I don't know what could be in between those words. It was never about wanting you for me. It was about wanting Lainey to be happy, probably. Lainey tried and they did not feel it. Beyond their control. El Mayo, maybe? Doesn't work. And then he goes in this whole you use me rant much nothing from them okay well i tried guys it's right even after sarah was an adult they rejected her there is no reason someone who is grooming someone would still reject them after becoming an adult sarah turned 18 august 2018 this text is onision and his spouse um Refusing to be with her even after her birthday. This text was public before Nissan lost his YouTube partnership. People kept lying slash slandering anyway. Okay, this doesn't exactly make them look good though. Like, this is like Sarah saying that like, you led me on to believe that I had a chance with you. Or I was led to believe because that's what Greg said. And he's like, well, I said that because I just wanted Lainey to be happy. He's so weird and separated. Why else do you think Sarah resorted to sexually extorting that? Then later changed for what she was a fleeting. I I don't know. There's part of me that still is just like, oh wow, like flipping sides, like what a bitch. Remember how Onisi on accused Sarah of rape when he broke up with her? And she apologized twice for raping him? Well, here she is admitting that she begged for forgiveness from Onision for what she did to him. She later claimed her apology was sarcastic. Yet, one, why would you be sarcastic right after someone refused to be with you? And two, why would you say you begged while crying for someone to forgive you if you... Because you, you guilt tripped her. You, you're a psycho manipulative nutcase. That's why. It, it's called gaslighting, bro. You did that. I mean, that's what it sounds like to me their legal case collaboratively danger to Onision and Sarah used to be friends they plotted their legal case collaboratively and for some reason now hate each other according to Sarah and her friend Lane but who knows maybe they'll change their story again and say that is that is odd why do they hate each other why do they hate each other I I don't I never found out all I ever knew that was that like Regina was kind of like the reject like you know, she or she felt rejected by them 
but then also she was kind of over involved with the Chris Hansen stuff. I think she was. I mean, I mean, it's kind of you know, it's kind of kind of crazy. And I wonder how it's gonna go with this whole Mount Max stuff, right? Because you get a bunch of group of people that like have you can't naturally have the same goal. That's just impossible, right? So, for example, in this Mount Max thing, right? You got Spencer, the main, the main. The main survivor, I guess we should say, it's weird to say it, right? But she's the one that's always on camera with Max. And apparently she's like in charge of the financial obligation or contractually obligated. Weird, weird language went on with Max, right? But like, that's the one that everybody knows. But like, apparently they have several others, at least two or three others that I, I um, that I know of. Um, and like, how do they feel, right? Um so they're not always going to be in the same line. And I know that Regina was very much in, in line with the with the documentary. Obviously, she was like in the first episode and, and like actually in all the episodes, whereas not none, none, none of the other girls were. And like. Yeah, so I mean, this must be this must be before. So I think maybe they they broke up with her. I was in the show or I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? This is. They, they like each other. Regina George, no. What's up, Sloth? It would be right on brand for them to be inconsistent and difficult to keep up with. One thing, however, is consistent. They both want money. This is Sarah responding to the fact that Oni Sion had just texted her, calling her a rapist again. In response to the rapist being called a rapist, she threatens to do more damage to Oni Sion and collaterally, his family. Sarah claimed she had every text between them since she was young, then later states she has no actual record of her claims against Oni Sion's spouse. Her claims were regarding texts. If she claims she has every text and claims she does not have the text that incriminates the people she claims she has every text from, I'm sure you see the problem. Sarah is a self-admitted sexual extorter, drug dealer, drug abuser, homewrecker, and self-admitted liar. Go figure she also wouldn't have the texts she said she had, but also said she didn't have. Just a common sense note, when someone privately accuses you of rape, after you privately apologized for raping them weeks prior, an appropriate response for the rapist is not to tweet quote damn he mad unquote. The fact anyone ever supported such disgusting behavior is beyond my comprehension. Sarah and Regina directly helped a false campaign to try and destroy Oni Sion's family by having his kids taken away. Why? Because Oni Sion was blackmailed into sleeping with an adult. That's extorting. Okay, Sion. Now blindness came to lose this world everything. Catastrophe. I thought this video was from a perspective. Why has it got a personalized message down here? <laughs> Guys, raiding my fans did well. Ugh, I know, I raided them and the video got views, so now I gotta do it again. Anyway, if you guys didn't know, I brought the Onision.xye forums back, XYZ, which is silly. This forum just looks better than the everyone forum, so in May of 2017 that haven't been looked at. So I'm gonna go through some of these, and I'm also gonna go through Onision.co. I love you. I love you. I love you. There's just you attacking us for no good reason. You mean Okay, well, it's time we speed it up. It's time we speed it up. I, I'm starting to feel like we're just all suffering here. And um, it, it's there's parts where it's like amusing and then there's parts where it's just pure suffering. And I, I apologize. I apologize. Where is the speed playback? Here we go. Is uh, Sarah. Your mom, because it was great last night. Apparently Shiloh had sex with your mother. Now this right here. is uh, Sarah saying to Kai, I'm not out to get you, which was an obvious lie, as you guys know, both anti-O and fan, you know that Sarah has been out to get Kai for some time now. So this is her lying directly, and Kai was right to not trust Sarah and reject Sarah for some time, because obviously Sarah was exactly what Kai felt Sarah was. Here's Sarah admitting to hurting Kai and apologizing to Kai, saying that Sarah blank as a oh, bro, with please. things as well. This is also Sarah implying that Billy was a psycho. How fun. Here's Kai pointing out to Sarah that Sarah dropped Kai as a friend because Kai refused to get with Sarah. It's a very vindictive, malicious thing to do to stop associating with someone by showing you and not just with her and with Kai. Forgot to be doing okay. sign something if you gave the money in your actual He sent okay. Sarah in 2021 because it is illegal victims. Here Oni on writes down notes regarding a call he had with Sarah in 2021 because it is illegal to record or even transcribe calls without two-part consent in Washington. This was the only method at his disposal. Oni on always apologized for being rude to Sarah while she was around him. He called her names like Meg Griffin and said she reminded him of Drew Carey. Despite all that Sarah had done to Oni Sion, he is a person that still often... 
He's emailing himself notes. Okay. Uh, on December 19th, 2021, around 9 p.m., James Jackson called Sarah to find out if she knew anything about an assumed document delivered by uh, a document delivered by assumed Regina. Sarah claimed she was not part of any lawsuit involving Regina. Sarah claimed she was healed and had moved on after James had been rude to her and apologized for being rude. She said she accepted his apology. James said goodbye and Sarah said goodbye. Sarah claimed Shallow was a person who was out of her mind. Okay, let's let's think about the, the timeline here. It's 2021. I forgot. 2021 is post. December 2021 is post documentary, right? Cheese and rice. I don't even know when this happened, guys. Apologizes when he knows he was mean, no matter who it is to. Sarah once again confirms she thinks Shiloh is insane and is not fond of Regina. As you see in these notes. Sarah I don't know what I don't know what you're watching. I don't know what I'm watching. But yeah, he developed his own soundtrack. When he's saying about almost about to be 50. Oh, Jesus and rice. Sarah claims she has quote healed unquote from Onisi on dumping her after she blackmailed him. Unfortunately, she changes her story later when she realizes she can make hundreds of thousands of dollars by lying on legal documents. This is proof that Onisi on was speaking to Sarah on the phone, just like he said he was. Unlike Sarah, when Onisi on says something is true, it's actually true. Sarah celebrating coming back to Washington state, despite most recently claiming to be traumatized in the very same state. If you are traumatized in a state, you don't celebrate returning to it, saying you miss your other home when the primary reason you were often there was to visit the best friend whose blackmailed husband you bragged about sleeping with. Additionally, when you claim to be traumatized by two people, you shouldn't forget the fact that weeks after the last time you saw- Additionally, when you claim to be traumatized by two people, you shouldn't forget the fact that weeks after the last time you saw them, you claim to not have a trauma-based disorder at all. And if you are traumatized, you generally don't spend your time on social media laughing while talking about the person who supposedly traumatized you. Trauma often means, if the subject comes up, you immediately feel sick and want to avoid the topic entirely. Also, why in September are you saying you have trauma, but months uh -huh. later you claim you do not have post-traumatic stress disorder? You are either traumatized okay, or you are okay. not traumatized. But Sarah changing her story so is nothing yeah, this new. Is and not, here Sarah this is very simple. This is like, like teenage arguments going on. Makes it clear she had trauma before, as in, before she knew Oni Sion. When you have trauma from before encountering someone, it becomes very difficult to place blame on them. Especially when the worst thing they did to you was call you Meg Griffin. In April of 23, someone from Sarah's same area code called Onision and harassed him while cussing at him. Sarah could be heard laughing in the background of this call. Onision immediately documented Sarah's ongoing harassment and clear malicious behavior absent of the claimed trauma. Once again, Sarah makes it clear she is not traumatized. She states she is only doing the legal case against Onision because she wants to silence him. She hates it when he brings up the fact she apologized for raping him and his... Wait, did, I, I don't think I read this one, huh? Oh no, I did read this one. ...via sexual extortion. This is why when she first came out, she helped run the hashtag deplatform predators campaign so Oni Sion would be silenced and unable to hold her accountable for the crime she committed against two people. Additionally, I remind you, Sarah claimed to not be a victim of either Oni Sion... Conversations with Sarah early 2023 to prove she was lied. ...on or his part... ...or initially, then complete... This is the crazy part to me, though, you know, like... That Sarah would talk to Kai again. Completely changed her story many months later, despite having no new physical encounter with them since her first statement. Like, if you're on a lawsuit, why is Snapchat chatting, bruh? Being innocent. Here you can see. This in is... early 2023, she is actively having a casual conversation with Onisi On's partner, years after her now claimed trauma. This is again, the same person who now claims to be traumatized, despite initially claiming to not be. Actions speak louder than words. What do you guys think about this? This is kind of crazy, huh? Onision and his spouse only spoke to Sarah for the sake of gathering information and evidence. In reality, they deeply <laughs> Kai was like, did you think I'm your friend? You fucking ruined my life. I mean, you know, like, I don't know. I don't, um, I don't know what she expected. Like, yeah, I, why wouldn't Kai do that, right? Like, I, don't, I wouldn't even call this like a manipulation thing. Like, like uh, I wouldn't even say like it was Onision's idea per se. I mean, it probably was, but like, I wouldn't even say like, I, I could understand why Kai would want, want to do this on her own. And I don't, I hate malicious lying criminals like Sarah. But when you have to gain fact-based information to protect your family from scum. Although it's like, <laughs> it's just casual conversation though it's like i'm skinny just just my boobs i'm gonna take that as a w like it's just casual conversations they're just talking about like boobs i bags who ruined your life it's kind of weird on both parts to be honest like 
Like, why? Well, Kai is also having a, a casual conversation, but is she even getting any information out of this? It's just, it's just maybe, maybe I guess maybe it was probably like the the notes that she took from the actual phone call, and this is just like what she feels she has to go through. I don't know. This is very strange. Is this real? I, I, I yeah, I think so. You have to talk to them because they're often stupid enough to give you the information you need to expose them to protect your family. Do you think a victim of a horrible crime would take a picture of themselves in front of the courthouse and post it to social media? What about if they took a picture and were smiling? Would a victim of a horrible crime take a picture of them squatting and smiling in front of a courthouse? What about squatting, smiling, and giving a peace sign in front of a courthouse? Would a victim of a horrible crime do that? Or would a total sadistic fraud do that? Let this photo sink in. Put your body language experts on this one. It would be... <laughs> Um, I think she would do it. It's like, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole journey. Also this whole thing too, like I, okay. I can kind of see his fury, right? I can like, if he wasn't a psycho, I could almost understand why this would be annoying. But like, I mean, this whole, this whole story was so like, so publicized and encouraged right it was so like yes girl power right like all that was such a such a public circus that like this felt like the right thing to do for her so she's gonna do it i don't i don't know i don't think it's like yeah she won't but like for that same reason for this same reason it confuses me that she would get in contact with them really interesting to see anyone try to justify this. Show this photo to victims of horrible crimes and ask them if they'd ever disgrace themselves as Sarah did here. And to top it all off, Sarah herself publicly... Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's it's weird to discuss. And I feel weird also discussing it like without bouncing it off of somebody else, right? Because I don't want to just like talk into the echo of my own head here because like... It, I don't know. What, what's... They claim... It's been a roller coaster with Sarah. That she was miserable and suicidal long before she ever encountered Onisi On or his partner. Where were you? What space were you in, Sarah? I was in a just a very bad place, especially when we like when me and Kai first became friends. I was in like I like I had wanted to like kill myself a few months prior to us meeting or like talking for the first time. So I was just I was in a very bad place. A lot of really bad things were happening or had already happened in my life, and I just really wanted. Uh, Oh, no, Mr. Munch. I just wanted something good to happen, and I felt like that was, like, the good thing that I got for everything else that was going wrong. This is one of many times Sarah contradicted her new narrative of Oni Sion's partner, claiming here and many other times that his partner was a blessing to her life. This vindicating police report is one of many places you will find Sarah claims that she was not victimized and consented to her physical encounters with the blackmailed Oni Sion and his partner. Oni Sion and his partner had conversations with the person who victimized them for the sake of vindicating themselves. So what is Sarah's defense for willfully having all these conversations? If she was ever a victim, as she initially denied she was only to later claim she was, why would she have these conversations long after their last physical encounter? Her being a fraud explains everything. Again. Well, okay, like, yes, I want to like, I want to know. Does anybody know the answer to that? Because obviously this is going to be super biased and super like Onision angled. Like, is there is there anything public that Sarah ever said? Right. Because naturally, I'm sure there's like more more Onision shit. Like there, there's got to be an explanation that we all missed out on. Like we're only getting the Onision angle, but I, it's 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 out there that she was in contact with them. Should I just keep skipping around? This is starting to drive me a little crazy. You. Sarah herself had to be on this video camera and you as quote actually there just spoke for herself and that's somehow new. I don't let's get to the new details for me but already me and I do one yet earlier she stated she had every text they ever exchanged and oh yeah this hello everyone my name is Sarah and recently I've seen some allegations against my friend Kai regarding me and I just came to make my statement since I see a lot of people talking for me but People are saying that we had sexual conversations or were planning on having sexual relations when I was underage, and we never did. Wait, wait, wait. In the legal documents, they claim this video is the literal truth. Literally. Yet. What did Sarah say in the Hanson interview? I know that I'm a victim of a crime uh, via Kai because of the pictures that we had exchanged. People are saying that we had sexual conversations or were planning on having sexual relations when I was underage, and we never did. I don't know why people are now saying this and bringing up old screenshots. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh. I have to laugh at this holy shit that just popped up. That have already been addressed. 
but Kai is one of the sweetest people I know, and he doesn't deserve this. And it's not. I gotta get to the part where he talks about me. Well, wait, I, I should almost be there theoretically, right? Not fair to me, and it's not fair to him. And I wish this would all stop. We're Forty the minutes. Same in. adult Sarah making completely different claims about the non-adult Sarah's life. Meanwhile, Sarah swore under penalty of perjury that the legal document statements were accurate. Wait, the Kia did transition. Detransitioned. Which in fact means she lied to Chris Hansen. Unless she wants to admit she lied on legal documents, which is a whole other problem. Again, on the legal documents, Sarah contradicts most everything she ever said about Oni Sion, now claiming he was not innocent like she said prior, and that she is actually the victim now of a brutal rape. So let's listen. Okay, the, the 2023 stuff came up with an entirely new story. Where is, is this, is this in the lawsuit? Should we go over the lawsuit? Oh, jeez. And to Sarah ex about a brute, because I don't, I, I don't know anything about a brutal, disgusting, you know, ape or a grape. I don't know anything about that. So like, is that, is that in the lawsuit? Why hasn't he presented that? Explain why she slept with the blackmailed Onision as many times as she did. And you did what you did with Greg in order to appease Kai. Is that fair? Well, not uh, towards the end of the relationship. No, it turned into me kind of like, kind of being like, well, Kai's being a. Kai's being mean to me and Greg's being nice, so I'm just gonna, like, go with Greg, I guess. Like, he's being nice to me, so I'm just gonna do what he wants. So her reason for sleeping with the blackmailed Onision was, according to her on this day, because he was nice. Which of course makes zero sense according to her new narrative and no surprise. Guess which interview can't be currently found on Chris Hansen's channel. That's right. We searched quote Sarah unquote on Chris Hansen's channel and Sarah's interview was nowhere to be found. This means Chris Hansen either private head, unlisted or worse of all, deleted the Sarah interview. What possible reason would he have for deleting the interview if not to aid the lawyer he is directly associated with, who just happens to be one of Sarah's representatives. Corrupt and evil to the core. Again, Sarah Sarah claims, as an adult, that when she was a minor, nothing was ever sexual with them, meaning everything was appropriate with her, as she had claimed elsewhere many times. This lines up with the reality that Sarah was only staying with them, as she claimed that her mom had beaten her. They were protecting her from an abusive home, and as Sarah states, it remained a safe place for her thanks to Onision and his spouse. Are you paying attention to the consistency here? Then you have no, Sarah bro. posting a timeline to Twitter. The awkward part is that on the legal documents she claims to have flown out in January, and contradicting everything she said before, now claims to have experienced a brutal rape. In involving her now crying during the act, absolutely disgusting. Yet as you may recall, she also bragged about sleeping with the same person she claimed raped her on Twitter. Real victims of rape do not brag about sleeping with someone they feel is a rapist and they most certainly know they are victims of a crime if it is as brutal as she described. Sarah points out that she later flew back, again, and again, to sleep with the blackmailed Oni Sion. Do you understand how disturbingly- Oh, blackmailed. Not blackmail. That got a little confusing when you're using AI because you know, literally earlier in the video, Onision said that she was apparently awarded by a black male. So it's like now, I guess now the news, sorry guys, it's like now the news story is that she's saying that she was awarded by black mailed Onision. Jeez and rice. So, but, but that is news to me. I feel like, I, I feel like I almost, I am a little curious to look at the lawsuit because she, she actually said that she was brutally she was brutally um yeah caitlin caitlin shepherd's got it in the nail uh nail in the, in the head or nail in the coffin or whatever the expression is brought her into an abusive home to take her out of an abusive home I, okay i feel like we should read that reverse though took her out of an abusive home only to bring her into another abusive home exactly like that that like dude you you're not saving her if you're bringing her into this toxic environment, that's that's the messed up part. That that is how you find someone that's like, um, like vulnerable. Insane. The contradictions here are, let alone the fact she repeatedly told the internet, then told the police that Onision was innocent long after the last time she saw him. Notice the lack of any. Guys, it's not just me, okay? <laughs> mention of a brutal rape here outside her admitting to have extorted Onision. Sexual extortion right here. A person who commits the offense of sexual extortion is with the purpose to coerce another person again. to engage in sexual con- So that is- We want to do it, and he's like, oh, well, yeah, we're, we're just having everybody sign one. Like, it's like, okay, well, haha. Uh, well, I want a clause in there that says, like, if I, like, sign, I want something I'm actually signing for. Yeah, that's sexual extortion, like, dude. You know, I basically was well, like, he's, like oh, live you know, responding. only if we do stuff will I sign the papers. <laughs> it was a fucking joke. Yeah, basically he was like, yeah, you didn't sign it. You, I, I made jokes about not signing it unless I got something on it, got what I wanted. 
Yeah, and even so, if I was being serious, like with it. When you tell someone that you'll only sign an NDA if you got what you wanted and were able to quote do stuff unquote, and you had just prior told them you could destroy their lives if you wanted to, those people are now faced with the decision of risking you destroying their thing. lives or sleeping with you as you demand. When Oni refused to sleep with her slash broke things off with her, she proceeded to destroy their lives, just like she mentioned she could earlier to skip. Dude, okay, okay, another parallel, all right? Another parallel from Forever Girl. She says, when my own Max and Onision gonna drop their collab song? <laughs> they both happen to be into that kind of music that sounds kind of similar when you think about it. Scare them into being with her. Sarah is a monster hiding in plain sight. Another reason the Hanson... Uh, you thought you thought Onision was claiming to be black. Okay, okay, so see, so it's not just... It's not, the, the, the AI has gotta go. Interview was probably deleted. Sarah confesses to returning to sleep with the blackmailed Onisi on many times and Black states she doesn't Onisi. know what love even is. How long did this sexual relationship continue with you, Greg, and, and Kai? Well, it happened first in January 2019, and then February 2019 is when I told them for, like, the second time, hey, I want y'all to get out of my... and don't talk to me again, bye. And then he, of course, kept talking to me. Um, uh, a couple months after that, he started really, really trying to get me to come back out just to be his friend. Joe, just be my friend now. Um, and then I went back out there and we ended up having sex again because, of course, that was his plan all along. Um, and then I went back out there again a, a week after that, uh, just me and Greg. And, of course, we had sex, too. With us. Did you love him? Greg? Yeah. I don't even really know what love is like especially especially kai but well, I, 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 still, I still love them even greg but like yeah sarah's friend telling the blackmailed onisi on spouse that sarah quote fucked unquote onisi on a lawsuit. specific chair then sarah again bragging about having sex with quote fucked unquote onisi uh, what the frig lane see on in a specific chair then sarah again bragging about having sex with her best friend's blackmailed husband while they were away from home if one thing is evident it is that these two women are not good people the opposite of good being evil and it's interesting that sarah's trying to accuse fangirls of being insane and imply she's not a homewrecker herself when she tried to expose kai for allegedly smoking pot at one point because sarah once she realized that i wasn't going to be with her and that she was too toxic for me to be around she decided to try and destroy our marriage as well by telling me that kai smoked pot because she thought that that would actually be a reason but like everyone else she doesn't attention i'm not so concerned with people smoking pot. all right guys should we investigate this accusation that onisina is not getting into this brutal is are we in the mode we could do it um let's see because i don't know about this this is new I, and i do think it's a little odd and not not like you know i don't want to discredit anything but it's kind of like kind of it feels like it kind of came out of nowhere i did not expect that okay we're getting derailed Let's go, 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 go.